Hi everyone, welcome to our Oracle Golden Gate webinar on difference between Oracle Golden Gate and Oracle Data Guard. My name is Ashish, Ashish Agarwal, and I'll be delivering this lecture to you. So before commencing the session, just a quick round of update regarding my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Ashish Agarwal underscore GG. So if you haven't visited the channel, I would request you to do visit the channel and do like, share and subscribe the channel. The channel is dedicated to Oracle Golden Gate related videos. Thank you. So in today's session, the session agenda includes comparison between Oracle Golden Gate and Oracle Data Guard. So what is Oracle Golden Gate? What is Oracle Data Guard? And first thing, what, th this is the regular question which I face from a lot of people is, people get confused between Golden Gate and Data Guard. So they think that Golden Gate and Data Guard are the same, like they perform the same kind of task. Then why should they opt for Golden Gate? Or why should they opt for Data Guard? Or why should they opt for either of the two, right? So that's the question which I regularly face. Though in Prima Facey, yes, both of them look same. But yeah, there is a lot of difference. The purpose of both the products is different. So in this training, you will learn about this in this session. So before I commence, just a quick introduction about me. So I'm expert in Oracle Golden Gate and Oracle Database on all Oracle technologies. I have 17 plus years of training experience in Oracle Golden Gate. So I have been training people in Oracle Golden Gate since 2008 last and I have entered into the 17th year now. So I have various high rated courses available as well, like Oracle Golden Gate Classic Architecture, Oracle Golden Gate Microservices, Oracle Golden Gate Very Data. Now I have trained so far 8400 plus individuals and 280 plus corporate clients on Oracle Golden Gate. And the feedback which I have received related to the training has been very good. You can check the feedback of the training which is available on my LinkedIn profile. It is also available on my YouTube channel. So I also have a dedicated YouTube channel which is only dedicated to Oracle Golden Gate related videos. So you can go through this. You can, if you haven't liked and subscribed the channel yet, I would request you to do like, share and subscribe this channel. So this channel is dedicated to only Oracle Golden Gate related videos. Okay. Now, uh, I am I am Oracle certified professional and Oracle Golden Gate certified and I am blogger and speaker at lot of uh, communities. Like I have presented my papers in AIO UG or Oracle Open World as well. I have done all those things. So I have been regularly doing this in North America community. I have been doing this and Indian community. I am doing this. Recently, I was invited to one of the Asian community as well. So I'm preparing for it. Hope you, you may find me over there. Along with that, I'm always available. Like I do regular webinar series on Oracle Golden Gate, providing knowledge and we understanding free webinars on Oracle Golden Gate, which we're attending today. So today's session agenda. So in today's session, we are going to discuss about introduction to Oracle Golden Gate. We'll also discuss about difference between Oracle Golden Gate classic architecture and microservices architecture. So a lot of people, they come and say that they are, they are unable to identify or they are unable to uh, understand the difference like they still have this question what is classic architecture and what is microservices architecture so in this session i'll also give you an idea about oracle golden gate classic architecture and oracle golden gate microservices architecture then we'll discuss about difference between oracle golden gate and oracle uh, data guard We'll discuss about future of Oracle Golden Gate and why learn Oracle Golden Gate. And we'll, we'll also have question and answer session about the training. So Oracle Golden Gate, what and why? So what is Golden Gate and why should we use it? So Oracle Golden Gate provides near real-time transactional data replication. So Golden Gate is data replication tool which allows you to replicate the data from source to target site. It allows you to 
replicate the data from stores to target. So it provides real-time transactional data replication. Real-time means as soon as the transaction happens on source, it gets applied on the target database. So near real-time, we call it. So near real-time means, see, there is no term. If you go to Oracle, the Oracle claims it to be real-time. But remember one thing, there is no tool which can be real-time. There will always be some delay, even though it might be few seconds, few milliseconds, but there will always be some delay. So I always call it near real time. So even when I uh, provide or uh, I do any webinar or provide any details about Golden Gate, I always say it near real time. I, I never say it real time as opposed to Oracle. Because whatever you may do, there will always be some lag, even though it will be minimal lag based on the configuration you do. But definitely there will be some lag. Now with Golden Gate, the replication can be unidirectional, it can be bidirectional or multidimensional as well. So unidirectional means one-to-one -one replication. So one-to-one -one replication means is you have one site and you want to replicate the data to the other site in one-to-one -one replication. That means from one site application will be connected and the replication will happen to the other site using Oracle Golden Gate. Now, the replication can be bi-directional as well. So, bi-directional means both the sites will be live. Application can be connected to either site 1 or site 2. And data replication will happen to the other site. So, Golden Gate supports bi-directional replication as well. It also supports multi-dimensional replication as well. So, multi-dimensional means all the sites, there will be multiple sites involved. And data replication can happen among multiple sites as well. Now with Golden Gate, replication can involve multiple, it can involve several sources and several targets as well. So with Golden Gate, it's not like you, you will have one-to-one -one replication. It can have multiple sources, sources replicating data to single target or multiple or single source replicating data to multiple targets as well. So that is possible. So Golden Gate supports data consolidation. Data consolidation means one source having multiple sources replicating data to single target. So that will be data consolidation. And Golden Gate also supports your data uh, broadcasting as well. So broadcasting means both the sites will be so, so single source replicating data to multiple targets will be data broadcasting. Okay. So replication can involve several sources and targets simultaneously. And it can be used for distributing data for backup, hot standby, auditing, reporting, data warehousing, and other stuff as well. So it can do multiple tasks for you. It can do multiple tasks for you. So it can, so this data could be used for backup, hot standby, auditing, reporting, data warehousing, as well as load distribution as well. Data can be replicated as is, or the replicated data may be edited transformed split into different distributions it can be used into it can it can be used for reporting data warehousing load distribution it can be used for multiple purposes as well okay now another important thing with oracle golden gate is it can replicate the data as is or replicated data can be edited. It can be transformed, split into different distributions. And you can have metadata added. So one, one of the major feature of Oracle Golden Gate is you, you can, so Golden Gate also supports data filtration and transformation as well. So Golden Gate supports your data filtration and 
transformation. Data filtration means you can filter out the data as per your requirement. You can filter out the data as per the requirement. So say, for example, on source, you have 10,000 records. On target, you have 9,000 records. So what very data can, so what Golden Gate can do for you is you can filter out the data as per your requirement. So say for example, hundred transactions happening on source, you want to replicate particular five transactions, you can do that. Same way, Golden Gate also supports data transformation as well. So data transformation means you can have, say for example, in a on a source on a table, you have got two columns, salary and commission. On target, you have got only one column salary. You want that combination of salary and commission should be replicated to target salary column. So you can transform the data as per your requirements as well. And you can split it into different distributions, have metadata added or filtered. Both DMLs and DDLs may be replicated in whole or in part. So with Golden Gate, you can replicate DDL or DML as per your requirement as well. So Golden Gate has multiple use cases. It can do multiple things, multiple use cases for you as well. So now let us discuss about Oracle Golden Gate classic architecture. What is Oracle Golden Gate classic architecture? So Oracle Golden Gate classic architecture. So you have so let us discuss about oracle golden gate architecture so you have a source database and a target database okay now source database can be oracle or any supported non oracle database so the good part with golden gate is it supports oracle as well as non oracle databases for you okay so your source database can be oracle or any supported non oracle database so any transaction whatever you do any transaction whatever you do it gets recorded into the transaction logs of the database it gets recorded into the transaction logs of the database so each database has its own transaction log so when we talk about oracle oracle has its own transaction logs and those transaction logs are called as redo logs or backup of redo logs, which are called as archive logs, right? In case of SQL Server, those transaction, those logs are called as transaction logs. In case of SQL Server, those are called as the transaction logs. So you can basically do, or you can basically whatever insert, update, delete, or any DDL you do, it gets. It gets it gets recorded into the transaction log of the database. So say for example, on source database, you are doing any transaction. So it will be recorded into the transaction log. So for Golden Gate, so Golden Gate is a change data capture tool. So what is Golden Gate? So Golden Gate is a CDC tool. CDC tool stands for change data capture. So what do we mean by change data capture is, Whatever change, whatever data change is happening on source, that will be captured by Oracle Golden Gate and it will be replicated to the target database. Okay, so Golden Gate is a CDC tool. So Golden Gate is not the only CDC tool available in the market. There are its competitors as well, like Attenuity is there. And there are few others in the market apart from Attenuity. So Golden Gate is a CDC tool and each CDC tool has the same concept. They capture the changes, whatever data changes are happening on source, they capture those. Okay, those changes are captured by Oracle Golden Gate. So these changes, whenever these changes happens into the database, so these changes are captured using Oracle Golden Gate process. Now these changes are captured by Oracle Golden Gate extract process. So what happens is <clears throat> the changes are happening. Those changes, whether those are DML or DDL transactions. Okay. So whether those are DML or DDL transactions. So those will be recorded into the transaction. Now Golden Gate capture 
which is also called as extract process in Golden Gate. So it will capture the changes from the source database and it will capture only committed transactions. Now, being a DBA, it's a common misconception, I should say, or misunderstanding as well, I can say, that people think that uh, the transaction log contains only the committed transaction. That's not true. Remember one thing, transaction logs contains committed as well as non-committed transactions. Both type of transactions are returned into the transaction log. So transaction log does not only contain committed transactions. Oh, sorry, they, they, they not only contain committed transactions, they also contains non-committed transaction as well. Okay, so whatever changes are happening into the source database, those changes are captured or extracted by the extract process. Once those are captured, they get returned into the trail file on local system, which are called as local trail file. Now, these local trail file consumes your operating system storage. So they store they they are stored on the operating system. So they consume your operating system disk. So the extract process captures it, writes it to local trail. Now, once the data is returned into the local trail the data pump process reads the data out of your local trail sends it over tcp ip network and writes it to remote trail on target side so the extract process will capture it so capture process and extract processes are the term which are used interchangeably so during that session right now i'll be talking about extract or capture it means they both are same so the extract process capture the committed transactions, write them to the trail file on local machine, which are called as local trail file. Once the data is available into the local trail file, the data pump process reads the data from local trail, sends it over TCP IP network and writes it to remote trail on target machine. So it writes it into the remote trail on target machine. So once the data is available into the local trail file, the data pump process reads the data from local trail, sends it over TCP IP network and writes it into the remote trail file on target machine. So again, this remote trail file resides on target remote trail. Now, once the data is available into the remote trail file, the delivery process or it is also called as the replicate process. So the replicate process delivers it to target database. So this is how Golden Gate process data flow happen. Extract process captures committed transactions. So remember one thing, Golden Gate captures only committed transactions. It doesn't capture your uncommitted transaction. Golden Gate only captures your committed transactions. So any transaction which is happening on source, it will be returned into the transaction log. Extract process will capture it, write it to local trail. Once the data is available into local trail, the data pump process will read the data from local trail, sends it over TCP IP network and writes it to remote trail on target. Once the data is available into the remote trail, the replicate process will read the data out of your remote trail and apply it to target database. So Golden Gate also supports a bidirectional. So bidirectional always is nothing but you do a unidirectional with some considerations. So in bidirectional both, what happens is both the sites will be live. The application will be connected to both the sites. So it will be connected to site one as well as site two. So whatever transactions are happening on site one, it will be done, done or applied to the site two database using the flow we discussed. Now from site two to site one replication, now whatever transactions are done by application on site two. So what we'll be doing, again, those transactions will be returned into the transaction logs. The extract process running over here will capture it, write it to local trail. Once the data is available into the local trail, the data pump process will write it to remote trail. And then once the data is available into the remote trail, the replicate process configured on site one will apply it to site one database. So here are three processes involved in Oracle Golden Gate. Extract, which is also called as capture. Pump, which is called as data pump process, which does the data transmission task for you, or data messenger, 
and the delivery which is called as the replicat process. Okay. So now one quick question here, if I have to ask you, type in the chat. So I'm discussing about Golden Gate classic architecture. Right. Now let me tell you one thing. Golden Gate basically was founded in 2009. Okay. Sorry, Golden Gate was founded in 1995 and it was named after famous San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. In 2009, Oracle overtook it and since then it is known as Oracle Golden Gate. Since then it is known as Oracle Golden Gate. Now, from 2009, now in initial years when Golden Gate was there, Golden Gate initially in 1995 was basically developed for the ATM databases. So to develop, to replicate the data from the ATM databases, Golden Gate was initially developed. But later on, its support was extended to multiple databases, including Oracle or other databases like SQL Server, DB2 or any other database. So 1995, Golden Gate was founded. 2009, Oracle overtook it. Since then, it is known as Oracle Golden Gate. From 2009 to 2017, there was only one way to configure Golden Gate, and that was through command prompt, GGSC. So you, if, if you have worked on Oracle Golden Gate environment, you must have seen this GGSC, right? This GGSC prompt. So how do you log into Golden Gate? You, you install Golden Gate and then log into Golden Gate. So if you log in via GGSCI, this is GGSC. So this is the command prompt of Golden Gate. So if you set up, manage, troubleshoot, configure Golden Gate through command prompt GGSCI. Until 2017, this used to be called as Oracle Golden Gate. In 2017, Oracle renamed it to Oracle Golden Gate Classic Architecture. So Classic Architecture allows you to set up, manage, troubleshoot, configure Golden Gate through command prompt, GGSC. Okay. And in 2017, that is Golden Gate version 12.3 onwards, they launched a new version, new type of architecture of Golden Gate, which is called as Oracle Golden Gate Microservices Architecture. Oracle Golden Gate Microservices Architecture. So Oracle Golden Gate Microservices Architecture is there since 2017, though still it is also still called as new architecture, even though it is seven years old, because right now the market share, most of the market share is still held by uh, classic architecture. If you go out into the market, still you will find classic architecture as the dominant player. But microservices is getting very popular now and Oracle is planning to like implement 40 to 50% of implementations by end of next year to microservices architecture. But still, classic architecture is the dominant player. So as of now, as of today, if I have to compare as per the data available, 80 to 82% or maybe 85% share or implementations are still on classic. Microservices implementation is 15 to 20%. So this is how your microservices looks like. So classic architecture is GGSCI based architecture. Microservices is a latest architecture, which whose one of the feature is GUI as well. So you can set up, manage, troubleshoot, configure Golden Gate through GUI as well. So you see this, this is microservices architecture, which has different services like administration service, distribution service, performance metric service, receiver service, and you have the GUI. So if you have to configure any extract process, you can configure by clicking on this plus sign and then follow the prompt. Same way, if you have to create any replicate process, you can click on this plus sign and then follow the next prompt. Now, let me tell you one more thing. This microservices GUI, or microservices is not only about GUI, it also has a command prompt as well. So another misconception or another way the people are uh, trained or people are uh, educated is microservices is only about GUI. That's not correct. 
microservices also has command prompt. So the thing is, like people like me who are working in Oracle Golden Gate since beginning. So I'm more comfortable with command prompt. The reason being, I always give one analogy. People who, so I, when I started working on computers, I directly started working on Windows, GUI. Okay. Now people before me, like my seniors, when they started working on computers, they worked on DOS, command prompt of Windows. Now internally, they had better knowledge than me. They knew internally how things are working. So they have better understanding. See, when we do GUI, we just follow the prompts. We don't know internally what is happening. But when you do it at command prompt, internally, you know what is happening, how things are working. And that makes you expert. That makes you to learn more as well. So same thing applies in Golden Gate as well. So in Golden Gate as well, same thing applies. And it ensures that, like for me, if you ask me, that if you work on command prompt, you get better understanding of Golden Gate and it becomes very easier for you to learn GUI in that case. So that's what my understanding and that's what I always tell each and every student of mine. So as I was telling, people like me who are more comfortable with command prompt instead of GUI. So in this microservices, they also have they also have command prompt as well. They, don't, they are not only like they only have GUI, they also have command prompt as well. So if you're more comfortable with command prompt, you can just follow, you can you can do whatever configuration you're doing from GUI, you can do it from command prompt as well. So microservices has both GUI as well as command prompt. So now you have two types of architectures in Golden Gate. One is classic architecture and second is microservices architecture. So classic architecture is there since beginning and it, it allows you to set up, manage, troubleshoot, configure Golden Gate through GGSCA. Microservices is a new architecture, though it's seven years old, but still it, this is termed as new. So which allows you to set up, manage, troubleshoot, configure Golden Gate through GUI as well. Now let me tell you one more thing. Until 12.2, until whenever we are talking about version, we are talking about Golden Gate. So until Golden Gate version 12.2, only classic architecture was available. From Golden Gate version 12.3 to 21C, classic and microservices architectures both coexist. So that means you can choose. So in your environment, if you want to implement classic architecture, you can choose. If you want to implement microservices architecture, you can choose. Now you may ask, what should we choose? It depends on your requirement. It depends on what you are more comfortable with. So still, if you go out into the market, still there is not many uh, people you will find with Golden Gate. Okay. And Golden Gate is very niche in today's scenario. And it is must have a must to know technology. Like as per indeed.com, let me tell you one more thing. It can help you like average salary of Oracle DBA and Oracle Golden Gate administrator, it differs by 30% minimum. So if you have Golden Gate knowledge, you can expect your pay to increase by 30% as per indeed.com. So in, in the US, when I talk about the average salary of Oracle DBA is $98,000 a year, US dollars a year. When you add Oracle Golden Gate to your knowledge or in your resume that jumps to 130,000. So almost 32,000 increase you are getting. And that is an average. And, and if you are working on a contractual job per hour job, like average contractual for Oracle DBA is 80 to $90 an hour. But when you have Golden Gate, it shoots up to 130 to $150 an hour. So that's the difference. So guys, if you have any question anytime, you can post it in the chat window. Okay, so now these are the two types of architectures in Golden Gate. Now, let me tell you one more thing. The latest version, so 21C is the last version. So from 21, from 12.3 to 21C, both classic architecture and microservices architectures coexist. But 21C is the last version where classic architecture is available. 
Okay. From 23 AI onwards, from Golden Gate version 23 AI. So the latest version of Golden Gate is 23 AI, who's, which has been launched and I'll soon, soon be doing one session on it as well. And so Golden Gate 23 AI, I'll be introducing this in my training as well. So 23 AI is the latest version and from 23 AI onwards, only MSA will be available. Microservices architecture will be available. There will not be any classic architecture anymore. So 21C is the last version where classic architecture is available. From 23 AI onwards, your microservices architecture will be available. Okay. Now, this is about classic architecture and microservices architecture. Now, there is one more product in Oracle Golden Gate family, which is known as Oracle Golden Gate Very Data. So, Oracle Golden Gate family contains three things. Classic architecture, microservices architecture, and very data. Okay. So, very data is another product in Golden Gate family, which is a data verification tool. So, as the name suggests, it's a separate product, let me tell you, and the product is owned by Oracle. So, as the name suggests, it verifies the data for you. So, say for example, so Golden Gate is a data replication. So say, for example, on source in a table, say, for example, we are replicating the data DPT to DPT on target. Now on source, we have 10,000 records in a table. On target, you have 9,000. So what very data can do for you is you can run the very data job to identify the discrepant rows. So very data can tell you what discrepancies are there. Even it does column by column check -in. And another important thing is you may say, Ashish, we can run the SQL query. You can find, you can run the SQL query to find it. See, one thing let me tell you is Golden Gate Very Data doesn't require an application to be stopped. That is one thing. So it takes care of any row, which is like, it takes care of your application, which is run. So you don't need your SQL queries to run. Or it, 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 and another thing is Very Data can also be run when your database is live. That is the major advantage. And it can take care of any, like say, for example, you ran very data job at 10 a.m. And you, you did some transaction at 10, 15 a.m. So it will take care of any row which has not been applied on the target date. So Golden Gate takes care of everything. Very data takes care of everything. And it will show you the report base. So very data is another product in Golden Gate family, which is a data verification tool. It can verify the data between source and target. So say, for example, you have 10,000 records on source and 9,000 records on target. So what very data can do for you is it can identify the data discrepancies for you and it can repair those discrepancies as well for you. Now, very data is getting very popular nowadays due to these cloud migrations going on. So cloud migration means organization want to confirm whether their data is in sync or not upon migration. So they want to confirm and check that. So that's why very data is getting very popular nowadays. So Veridata is another product in Golden Gate family, which completes your Oracle Golden Gate environment. So if you go out for any interview, any job support, or anything related to Golden Gate, any question in Golden Gate will come either from classic architecture and or microservices and or Veridata. None of the question will go out of these three things. So if you are looking to be a Golden Gate expert and if your vision is to be Golden Gate expert in next three to five years. Learn all three things. This will ensure that you have better command on Golden Gate and anything related to Golden Gate you have covered off. Another major advantage with Golden Gate, let me tell you is Golden Gate, now with this cloud uh, implementation, is there any difference in Golden Gate? That is the best advantage with Golden Gate. The way Golden Gate works on on-prem database in the same way it works on cloud database. So there is no difference in Golden Gate, whether you are implementing it on-prem or on cloud, whether you are using Oracle cloud services, whether you are implementing it on AWS, whether you are implementing it on Azure cloud, the way Golden Gate works remains same. That is the major advantage. Another important thing, Golden Gate works with heterogeneous databases. 
So heterogeneous databases means it not only works with Oracle, it also works with SQL Server, it works with MySQL, it works with Postgres databases. So another important thing is this architecture, what I'm talking about here related to Golden Gate, this architecture works with all the databases, whether it is Oracle or whether it is Postgres, whether it is any other database like MySQL or any other data. Only difference is 95% of things remain same. Only difference is how it, these, so these are the Golden Gate processes. Remember one thing, even though the product is Oracle Golden Gate, still Golden Gate is a product which allows you to, which allows you to, which is external to the database, I should say. Even though the product is Oracle, still it is external to the database. So how it connects to the database? So the, this extract process establishes connectivity with the source database. This replicate process establishes connectivity with the target database. So this is how they establish the connectivity. Now, how to establish the connectivity is you require a Golden Gate user to be created in the database. So in Oracle, when it is Oracle database, it uses TNS entry. When it is SQL Server database, it uses ODBC connection to connect. That's the only difference apart from that, whether you're working on Oracle, whether you're working on non-Oracle database, whether you're working on on-prem, whether you're working on cloud. The way Golden Gate works remains always same. Extract process will capture the data, write to local trail. Data pump process will read the data from local trail, send it over TCP IP network, write it to remote trail, and then replicate process will apply the data to the target database. Okay. So now one more question which people ask me is with the introduction of microservices architecture, does integrated no longer exist? Right? So many people have this question. Many people ask this question from me that with the introduction of classic architecture, does MSA really do exist? Sorry, the, the, with the introduction of microservices architecture, does integrated really exist? Many of you might have this question. If you have, type in the chat window, yes. And if you have any question, guys, anytime, you can post your question in the chat. Okay. Now, with the introduction of this microservices architecture, does integrated no longer exist? Guys, let me tell you, there are only two types of architectures. First is classic and second is microservices. So in Golden Gate, there are only two types of architecture, classic and microservices. There is no, and microservices is also called as MSA. So there is no integrated architecture and there had never been. So you might say one thing, Ashish, we are using this integrated in our environment. So what's that? Remember one thing, as I told you, there are only two types of architectures, classic and microservices. Now, when you set up Golden Gate, classic and microservices, under that, you have got different types of extracts and replicates. So the type of extract, there are two types of extract in Golden Gate. One is classic extract and second is integrated extract. So the term integrated you are referring to is either integrated extract or replicate. So initially when Golden Gate was introduced until integrated extract was introduced, there was only one type of extract. Okay. Then the traditional extract was renamed as classic extract. So basically why this confusion comes is because the existing architecture was renamed to classic architecture. Right. So the cl term classic means here is traditional. So the traditional or initial extract, which was there, it was called as initially it was only extract. Then when integrated was introduced, it was renamed to classic extract. So under classic architecture, you have got different types of extract. Like you can configure classic extract or integrated extract. Same way under microservices architecture, you can configure classic extract or integrated extract. So architecture, so, so 
this as a whole is an architecture. Okay. Under that, you can configure different types of extracts and different types of replicates as per your requirement. Okay. So, Golden Gate configures your, in Golden Gate, you have got different types of architecture, classic and microservices. And under that, you can configure different types of extracts and replicates. Just to give you an overview, we won't be able to discuss because of timing constraints. But different, that is a separate topic, which we cover during the training about what are the different types of replicates. But just to give you an overview, there are four types of replicates. If you want to know, what are those four types of replicates? Integrated replicate, non-integrated replicate, coordinated replicate, and parallel replicate. So these are the four types of replicates as well. Okay, so you can configure any type of extract, any type of supported replicate, of course, if, there, if that is supported, whether you are using classic architecture or microservices architecture in your environment. Okay, so Golden Gate is a product which allows you to replicate the data between source and target and it ensures that your replication is happening properly without any issue. Okay, now let us quickly have a, so this is classic architecture. Okay. In classic architecture, there is extract data pump and replicate cost. Now in microservices architecture, it is a new REST API based architecture, which enable you to configure, monitor, manage Golden Gate through web UI. So Oracle Golden Gate microservices architecture, you have got different services like admin server, performance metric server, distribution server okay then you have receiver server here so you have different services running so you have got a service manager under service manager you have got different services so there are different services which runs in microservices architecture so this is microservices ui for you so you have got admin server, distribution server, or service, performance metric server, or service or receiver service. Okay. So what you do under administration server, you configure Golden Gate extract process, which writes the data to the local trail file. Then with help of distribution server, it sends the data over TCP IP network where receiver server receives it and writes it to remote trail and then the replicate process applies it to target database. So there is no data pump in uh, microservices. So classic architecture distribution server service, no, sorry, classic architecture data pump has been replaced with distribution server in microservices. Same way in classic architecture, there is collector process as well. So the collector process has been replaced with receiver server in microservices architecture. So in microservices, there are different services which runs and which with help of which the replication happens. So these are the components of your microservices. Administration server, service manager, receiver server, and receiver server, distribution server, and performance metric server. So these are the services which runs in microservices architecture. Okay, let us now discuss about Oracle Golden Gate and Oracle Data Guard. So what is the difference between them? So many people, in fact, you, because you have joined today, you might have the same question. Like Golden Gate is a data replication. Data Guard is also a data replication tool. So what is the difference between the two? First of all, of course, let me tell you, the major difference is Golden Gate is a licensed product. Golden Gate, Oracle charges heavily for Oracle. Golden Gate is not a cheap product. Okay. However, Data Guard is free of cost. Active Data Guard is also chargeable, but that is again not that costly as Oracle Data Guard as per the Oracle license. So, if a product is free, so basically we are comparing a product which is highly chargeable to the one which is free, right? So 
that should answer there is a huge difference the capability wise and what they are trying to achieve with golden gate they cannot achieve with data park right that is the first thing second thing is golden gate is so so personally if you talk about when you talk about your personal growth as i told you average salary of oracle db and oracle golden gate differs by 30% and that is average it can differ up to 7 i have seen personally as well myself when i was working as oracle db and when i started learning golden gate there was huge difference 80% almost so it can differ up to that much as well. but being a dba data guard has to be there so have adding data guard to your resume doesn't add it doesn't help you personally of course every knowledge helps but when i talk about like financially wise or monetary wise if you if you go to your in interview so if you are oracle dba it is mandatory to to have or to have knowledge on data guard right it doesn't it's it's not treated like you will get they will pay you better but if you have golden gate knowledge yes you will be paid better so there has to be a difference right so i'm talking right now about monetary wise i'm not talking about technically but monetary wise just to give you an idea yes there has to be a difference for those who think that if data can can we use golden gate in place of data guard or can we use data guard in place of data? so that straight away now going forward you can answer no you cannot why technical reasons you will be understanding now okay so oracle active data guard when we talk about disaster it is a disaster recovery and read only offload to active standby so what happens is you have a primary site and a standby site okay so whatever transactions or real time data is is getting loaded on your source database it will be synchronized to the target database using data using the data guard so data guard is a data it is a block by block data replication so block by block means whatever is happening on primary database so even if you run alter system alter database command that will be replicated to target site so basically active sorry data guard is database level replication i always tell this as data guard is database level replication tool so database level replication tool means is whatever activity is happening on your source database primary database it will be replicated to your secondary database so block by block so alter system alter database any parameter database parameter change you are doing it will be replicated to the target site but golden gate is not database level replication it's an object level replication so golden gate works on your application data so whatever object changes are happening in your golden gate only those gets replicated using oracle golden gate we'll discuss more on this so in data guard whatever changes are happening on the primary database they will be synchronized on to the target database now if you are using it as there are two types of standby database one is active so active standby means it will be in read it it will be in read write mode and the standby database normal standby which many organization or most of the places it is being used of which is free of cost as well your secondary database is is not only in uh, the active standby means it it will be in read only mode okay and when it's standby it means that it will be like mounted mode and whatever transactions are happening on source they will be replicated to target site so basically if in case of disaster only you can get your database in you can get your database up and then application can connect it in data guard when i am talking about so data guard is an database level replication tool which performs block by block replication so whatever transactions are happening on source they will be replicated to the target database so in data guard what happens is your target database is in mounted mode so basically your data is getting replicated 
but you cannot do anything with it unless you switch over the role of it and you make it primary and the other side is standby. Then only it will go into read write mode and then you can turn it. You can do whatever you want over there. However, there is one more thing which has been introduced, I think, in golden in database version 12, 12C only. Active standby. So in active standby, you can keep your target standby database in read only mode so that you can run the queries. So if your database, so active standby, remember, is a licensed product. Oracle charges for it. It's not free. Your standby, when not in active mode, when it is in mounted mode, it's free of cost, but you cannot run any query on it. But in active standby, it is in read only mode and you can run your query. Like you can switch your reporting jobs if you want, and you can run your incremental backups, et cetera, if you want from there. Okay. Now, how Oracle Data Guard and Golden Gate works. So when changes are made at Oracle database level, Blocks are changed in the database records and they are added to redo logs. In data guard, depending on the mode that you are running, these records will be immediately copied to the standby or default. So data guard also has multiple type of modes. Well. So when changes happens, so these log records can, can be immediately copied to the standby. You can defer it as per your requirement. These are all the changes to the database. Since they are log records and log data, they are very quickly applied to the standby database. All non-committed transactions are rolled back. All committed transactions are rolled forward. And recovery can happen in a matter of seconds. Okay, so this is how your data guard works. Golden Gate works in completely different way. Golden Gate extract process mines the redo log in case of classic extract or receives changes from log miner database and captures only committed transaction. So remember one thing, this is the major difference between data guard and golden gate that golden gate captures only committed transactions. It doesn't worry about any uncommitted transactions. But in case of data guard, that is the major thing. The non-committed transaction gets rolled back on target and committed transactions are rolled forward on the target database. Okay, so Golden Gate is an object level replication. Data Guard is, an, is a database level replication. It is a block by block replication data guard. So active data guard, when, when we talk about active data guard and Golden Gate comparison, so active data guard is complete one way physical replication. Golden Gate is logical replication, active, active, high availability. You can do it for one to many, many to one. You can do subset replication, transformation, etc. So one of the major thing with Golden Gate is you can have, as I told you in the beginning as well, you can have one source, multiple target, or you can have one so you can have multiple sources, single target. So one to one, one to Golden Gate supports one to one one to many, many to one replication as well. You can perform data filtration and transformation as well. With data guard, you cannot do that. Okay. With data guard, you cannot do your data filtration or transformation or you cannot do one to one or you can have only one source and one target. Another thing is with data guard, it can only be Oracle to Oracle, same version, platform same. Golden Gate, there is no requirement. You can have stores on 19C, target on 11C. I'm talking about database. Okay. So in Golden Gate, the major advantage is your stores database can be 19C. Target can be 11G. Golden Gate can replicate that. Your source GG version can be 21C. Target Golden Gate version can be 12C. Golden Gate can replicate the data. So Golden Gate supports forward compatibility as well as back backward compatibility. So forward compatibility means your database is, say, for example, on lower versions on source DB 11G and target is DB 19C. Golden Gate can replicate the data or 21C as well. Golden Gate can replicate the data. Same way on source, your Golden Gate can be 12C. And your target golden gate can be 21c golden gate can replicate the data without any issue 
So that is the major advantage with Golden Gate that it can support your forward compatibility as well as backward compatibility. Another thing with Golden Gate is it can support any platform. Your source and target can be any platform. So source can be Linux, target can be Windows. Golden Gate can has no issue. In fact, different Endian format can be supported as well. Big Endian, your source can be in Big Endian. Like if you're not aware, for those, each platform has an Endian format. Like Linux has Linux has big Indian uh, or small Indian. Windows is big Indian or small Indian. So until Golden Gate version 18C, there was some restriction that if your source is on big Indian and target is on small Indian, there was an issue. But now going forward, like there is no issue. So your source can be Linux. No, that was different. Forget about big Indian and small Indian. That was like your Golden Gate can also run from remote server as well so that was different oh, big indian and small indian used to come in that way okay forget about that part i don't want to discuss right now because of time constraint but yeah sure so let us continue this discussion that golden gate can have your different platforms between source and target so your source can be linux target can be solaris so even though the indian format of linux and solaris is different so linux is i believe small indian and solaris is big indian so still they can replicate the data, whether your Golden Gate version is 11G, whether your Golden Gate version is 12C, 18C, 19C or 21C or 23A, whatever it is. So Golden Gate source and target platform can be anything. Source can be Linux, target can be Windows or any other platform. Golden Gate can replicate the data without any issues for you. So you can have different platforms and different uh targets as well. So you can have different platforms between source and target, which is not the case with data guard. Okay. So standby database in active data guard, standby database is exact copy. Okay. And it is opened in read only. In golden gate target is a different database with same data. It may have a different physical structure or indexing scheme as well. So your target database can have like you if you are filtering the transactions so you can have different structure different database in fact on target tables you can add some columns so you can do data filtration and transformation as per your requirement okay golden gate is extremely flexible stores and target are always open and read right okay then in active data guard your backups are interchangeable so you can use backup of a standby or data guard as per requirement because the data is always same, but in Golden Gate, yeah, because your data may not be same, hence you, you cannot use your backups of source to target or target to source. Okay, that integrated automatic database failover. So you can do automatic database failover. If your primary is down, your secondary standby will become source inactive data guard. Okay, now Golden Gate, Rich functionality and flexibility also bring additional deployment considerations like performance management, some data type restrictions, application support. Now that is another. So, so with Golden Gate, say for example on source, the application was supported, performance was fine. But on target, because you are changing the indexing scheme, you are changing like data, you are changing the structure. So it can have some performance issues. I, I'm not saying it can have performance issues, but the mean to say is on source, your performance was good, for example. On target, it may be very good or it may deteriorate as well in comparison to source as well because you have different set of data, different set of structures. You have like you may have some data type restriction as well. Application support may be different as well. So you will have to do different types of things with Golden Gate. Okay, so basically the purpose is if your active data guard is being used on source, you cannot you, you cannot say that same will be used for target as well. Okay, in Golden Gate. Okay, now another thing is Golden Gate is used for zero downtime upgradation and migration. You cannot use data guard. With data guard, you will, you will have some downtime. But with Golden Gate, you can use it for zero downtime upgradation and migration. And organizations nowadays, 
buy golden gate licenses short term just for cloud migration because a lot of things are going to cloud so that they can use golden gate for zero downtime upgradation and migration extensive cloud cross platform support is available with golden gate however with data guard there is limited cross platform support available in active data guard you have to do if you, if there is any patching so you have to perform standby first patching but in golden gate like you have two different databases so even if you don't do any patching on any of the site golden gate will have no issues unless there is any compulsion to do okay then database rolling maintenance and upgrades then you have unique uh, transparent to operate active data guard is transparent to operate and no data type restrictions because it is one to one replication so there is no data type replication with golden gate there may be some data type rep rep restrictions as well let me tell you with golden gate version 19c most of the restrictions which were until 12c there was some restriction in oracle golden gate but now with golden gate version 19c the support for blob clob or other data types have introduced so there is no issue with the support as well now with data type restriction so this point now doesn't hold much to with golden gates it's same in both data guard and golden gate as well okay then uni in active data guard unique protection from silent corruption caused by lost rights and automatic repair of corrupt data blocks in database so that is one feature in active data guard of course that any corruption of the block which happen it you can on on uh, in data guard it can automatically be re uh, recovered or repaired but in golden gate what happens is standard corruption protection integrated with oracle database so automatically it doesn't happen there is some manual intervention required when corruption comes but the thing is let me tell you until golden gate version 12.2 corruption used to be the common phenomena in golden gate but from golden gate version 12.3 onward golden gate is more robust and because see another thing is it's a costly product oracle charge for it and data is everything for an organization so if any corruption happens any data issue comes oracle is bound to pay penalty also so now from golden gate version 12.3 onwards golden gate is more robust and to be very honest i don't see any such issues like data type restriction issues or corruption issues in golden gate anymore but yes i have seen because i have been working in golden gate for a long time so when golden gate was new like in golden gate version 11g or 12.1 as well i used to see these kind of things but now i don't see this anymore so golden gate and active data guard see i always say one thing you can compare apple to apple but you cannot compare apple to orange so same thing applies in data guard and uh, golden gate golden gate is golden comparing golden gate and data guard is comparing both of them like you are comparing apple to orange because both are completely different both usages is different you cannot say that if you have data guard requirement you can replace it with golden gate or you cannot do vice versa if you have golden gate requirement you cannot re replace with data guard or if you have data guard requirement you cannot replace with golden gate see the whole purpose is golden gate is also used for business intelligence purpose as well let me tell you golden gate along with informatica or odi is one of the best business intelligence product or combination available in the market so golden gate is also used for business intelligence like amazon they are using golden gate all financial institutions telecom institutions they are using for business intelligence purpose they use golden gate they they invest heavily in golden gate so golden gate and data guard are two different products where you cannot compare yeah oracle had got a stream until 11g now streams has been completely replaced by golden gate so you can say that golden gate streams golden gate is a solution for streams but golden gate is not a solution for data guard another thing let me tell you is golden gate works on application data so golden gate is an object level replication tool so when you configure golden gate so say for example you are configuring golden gate here let me show you one configuration here so this is one of my golden gate environment 
Oh, I, I think I deinstalled it. Okay. Uh, let me go to Gget2. Let me see here if I have anything. Okay. So I'll show you this parameter file, for example, exebi18. Okay. So see, I have given an include list, so I can open this as well. In this, the list of tables is provided. Okay. So this golden gate, so there may be thousand schemas in this database, in PDB2 database. There can be hundred schemas there can be thousand schemas in this database. Each schema can have hundred tables. But what we are doing is we are asking Golden Gate to capture the data only from GG training to schema and from these two tables, DPT22 and EMPT. So you can pick and choose what you want to replicate. It's not like you are doing complete database replication at yours. So that is the major advantage with Oracle Golden Gate. You can pick and choose. It works on your application data and whatever you want to replicate, you can replicate. You can do row level filtration as well. That's what you will learn during the training as well. I discussed that during the training as well. So row level filtration. So active data guard, you don't have any choice. Whatever is happening on source, it will be replicated. One-to-one -one replication. So the whole purpose of active data guard is just to ensure disaster recovery. In case of disaster, say for example, your target is down, target is, there is some power failure, flood or any other thing. In case of disaster, you can switch over your target to primary. But Golden Gate is much more than that. Apart from disaster recovery, you can use it for business intelligence. You can use for data warehousing. You can use it for data broadcasting. You can use it, use it for like multiple things. Another thing what I want to tell you is active data guard or data guard can only be set up from the same database. However, Golden Gate can run from your different servers. So another important thing is this golden gate, which we are running in this architecture. So you can set this golden gate. It's not like golden gate has to be present on the same server as the database server. Golden gate can also be present on the remote server as well. You must have heard the term golden gate hub. So this is what golden gate hub does for you. So golden gate processes runs from the remote server instead from the database server. So there are advantages. So Golden Gate holds advantage over data guard in terms of data filtration, transformation. Along with that, let me tell you major thing. Performance of Oracle Golden Gate is much higher or much faster than active data guard or data guard. Golden Gate can replicate the data within few seconds based on the configuration. With data guard, there are issues which have been identified. I'll talk about SBI, State Bank of India. It is one of the biggest bank of India. Many of you know who are from India. For, for those who don't know, State Bank of India is one of the biggest database. I was working with them in 2011 to 2013. I worked with them. And let me tell you, all my learning, because it is such a big database, 43 terabytes it was at that time. I'm assuming it to be 80 terabytes now or more because it's almost 10 years. Whatever I have learned in Golden Gate, I dedicated to SBI. I learned a lot over there because their database was so complex. The setup was so complex. The configuration which I did was so complex at that time. So let me tell you, they were running data guard. So they had their primary server in Mumbai, India. And their secondary server using data guard was replicating using to Hyderabad. They were replicating their, their secondary site was in Hyderabad where they were using golden uh, data guard to replicate. Now what used to happen was because they were replicating the data what was happening they they used because they, they used to run some nightly jobs and during nightly jobs they used to generate the archive logs up to 500 GB and at that time you won't believe the data guard used to lag behind three days as well. I have seen personally that the data guard used to lag behind three days. Now assume that the data guard is lagging behind three days and suppose there is some disaster in Mumbai. Okay. What they will be do, doing? They cannot switch to Hyderabad because 
they don't have the exact copyright so what they to do so another thing is like they used to run lot of reporting jobs on their primary database so at that time most of you can relate sbi was is still a government bank so at that time sbi was losing its customers because the customer dissatisfaction was coming the their database didn't used to respond and hence as a result many of you or your parent if they used to go to the bank they were getting the message that server is not responding it was not server it was basically database response was not coming it was not able to take their request because in banking domain or telecom domain what used to happen is what happens is you guys they, they run lot of reporting jobs as well reporting jobs consume lot of database performance so what i suggested to them was let us replicate data using golden gate and switch their reporting jobs to the secondary database this is what we did and you won't believe the customer satisfaction improved and sbi before implementation of golden gate they were experiencing of they were experiencing the lag of they were experiencing the loss of almost 5 crore rupees a day 5 crore is almost 1 million dollars a day after that still there was loss i would not say but it was almost 90% less with golden gate how it happened that is something some other day to discuss because but yeah with golden gate has very much like golden gate is much advantageous and you and i i cannot say that data guard is not ha, doesn't have advantage the only thing is data guard is a separate product golden gate is a separate product both of the product have their unique advantages and unique used cases how you do how you want to use them it depends on the business requirement so going forward because you have attended this webinar i don't want or i don't want you to tell that can we use data guard in instead of golden gate or can we use golden gate instead of it? that that's the whole point okay so the configuration of golden gate and data guard has the purpose of synchronizing data between two or more system oracle data guard and golden gate involves at least two systems where transactional data from one database is required to be moved to another database the purpose of replication of data can be disaster recovery migration of data or preparation of secondary systems data guard is best for disaster recovery and data protection problems golden gate is more flexible heterogeneous replication mechanism and all is also able to filter and transform the data while it is being replicated and performance wise golden gate performance is much higher data guard is now another thing is data guard is oracle specific technology while golden gate support heterogeneous database systems including all major rdbms golden gate only works in unidirectional data guard can works oh, so, sorry data guard only works in unidirectional golden gate can works in bidirectional environment as well so data gate data guard supports active passive replication one of the database is primary and another one is inactive active data guard however with golden gate both are active active so golden gate supports active active replication and allows both systems to work simultaneously while maintaining the data integrity golden gate allows filtration and transformation of data with conflict management while it is being replicated between both databases golden gate allows replication across platforms golden gate has many case of utilization it is not only database to database replication the use of flat files for data transformation and support for heterogeneous systems are some of the other features so golden gate can support number of different business requirements like unidirectional bidirectional p2p broadcasting consolidation and cascading as well so golden gate ensures business continuity and high availability it supports zero downtime time data migration and upgrades it can you use for decision support system and data warehousing data integration and data consolidation okay so if you are looking to do any of the following golden gate is best solution replicate one or more tables to a read write data by directional replication replicate and transform tables zero or near zero downtime upgrades 
हेट्रोजीनियस रेप्लीकेशन हाई अवेलेबिलिटी रियल टाइम बिजनेस इंटेलिजेंस और इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज योर टारगेट फॉर क्वेरी और रिपोर्टिंग ओके नॉट टूगेदर यूज केसेज ऑफ योर ओरकल गोल्डन गेट एंड डेटा गार्ड नॉट देर आर यूज केसेज ऑफ ओरकल गोल्डन गेट एंड डेटा गार्ड बींग यूज टूगेदर सो वॉट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन हैव मल्टीपल सोर्स डेटा बेसिस रेप्लीकेटिंग टू सिंगल टारगेट ओके एंड फ्रॉम देयर यू कैन क्रिएट एंड स्टैंड बाय सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द यूज केस वेयर गोल्डन गेट एंड डेटा गार्ड सो यू हैव मल्टीपल सोर्सेज इट कुड बी मल्टीपल हेट्रोजीनियस डेटा बेसिस इज either oracle or non oracle database replicating data to single oracle database and from that you are making copy of this database using oracle standby data okay so disaster recovery and disaster protection so fast fail over to physical standby it so disaster recovery and data protection can only be done for oracle database okay data distribution and synchronize so together use cases of active data guard and golden gate so it is enterprise wide heterogeneous replication like you have got heterogeneous databases replicating data to single oracle database using golden gate and then using data guard you are replicating it to you are creating the copy of so non invasive by read, reading the data, database log it supports active active scenario guaranteed delivery across wide area okay so that are the that is the major advantage of using active data guard and oracle golden gate together you can do that so how data flow happens in oracle golden gate is oracle log files are read by extract process capturing any required data for replication extract carries out mapping and conversion to the data and then writes it out to the trail file so extract process captures the committed transaction write it to local trail then data pump process read the local trail file and writes it to remote trail file once the data is written into the remote trail file the replica process reads the trail file and applies it to target database okay so now with so much advantages of golden gate now the question come who should be learning golden gate whether you should be learning golden gate or not so the thing is if any of the below answer is there as yes you should be learning if you have if you are not already learning so if you want to basically accelerate your career growth then you should learn golden gate if you are working as dba apps dba so any oracle or non oracle database administrator if you are working as pls skill developer technology is responsible for data replication high availability data technology should learn cloud migration specialist should learn so if you are if you want to migrate the data from one cloud to another cloud or from on prem to cloud you should be learning so golden why should you learning why should you be learning golden gate is golden gate is used by all top banks and telecoms and large enterprises with big budget so higher paid job today employer expect dba and developer to more, know more than one task golden gate is niche and in demand field i tell you one scenario like initially during covid times when cloud was not you won't believe i used to receive almost 500 to 600 inquiries a day with introduction of this uh, cloud are dba no longer are dba going to be extinct or db or our job is in danger i always say one thing always keep upgrading yourself trust me you won't have any issue every year every cycle last 10 to 15% people who are in bottom 10 to 15% they always have a sword hanging on their job because see organizations have to cut their budget right they have to save their money so if you are in less than 10 to 15% then yes you won't you won't be able to survive but yes if you can upgrade yourself and if you can be in top 80% you don't have to worry about your job and another thing is not only remaining in the job another thing is climbing the ladder in terms of your position as well as your salary both things matter you have to learn something new so not only golden gate golden gate is one of them if you think you are working in different technology then learn the technology most suited to your skill okay so if you are working as os admin and if you learn golden gate then definitely it's not going to help learn the technology 
because there are other people as well in this webinar who are not as a who are not only DBA. So if you're not working as a DBA, if you're working as say for example OS admins, then learn some technology which can help you in growth in that particular way. Okay. Now with now another thing is or why there is so much demand of Golden Gate administrators is because there are a lot of cloud implementations going on. So customer want real time replication or zero time data migration from on-prem to cloud. So they, you can go for like short-term contract project as well. There, they, they pay you very handsomely and you do their project and come out. DBA developers, architects can set apart by upskill and stay ahead in career and better paid in Oracle Golden. Okay, so I offer courses on all three things, what we discussed. So we have a live training and all three courses are done on the latest version. Oracle Golden Gate Classic Architecture, the latest version is 21C. Oracle Golden Gate Microservices is also done on 21C as of now, but soon it will be upgraded to 23AI. Once 20, 23AI is like proved without any, like it is now, uh, it is bug free and it is being used in organization. So I'll be upgrading it to 23i as well. Currently, microservices is done to 21c. Here it is mentioned as 19c, but we have upgraded to 21c. And then Oracle Golden Gate Validate. We do training on all these three courses. So the duration of classic architecture is 21 to 24 hours. Microservices is 12 to 15 hours. And Veridata is 10 to 12 hours. So you can access all the course content from this link. I'll post this content as well. On the chat window, you can find the course content from here. So the course content basically covers, it starts from basics and covers up to advanced level. So let me tell you one thing. This course content, this training is interview and job oriented. So upon completion of this training, you will be able to clear the interviews as well as provide the job support. So let me tell you one thing. I have implemented Golden Gate in more than 1000 projects. So the training curriculum is designed in such a way that you can, what you can find in industry. So upon completion of this training, you will have the knowledge on Oracle Golden Gate, what seven to eight years Golden Gate experience person would have. So this training starts from basics, covers up to advanced level. So basically I start this training from beginner. I start this training basically from download and install. We discussed how to design Golden Gate, how to manage Golden Gate, how to set up Golden Gate, how to troubleshoot Golden Gate, how to do performance tuning on Oracle Golden Gate, how to set up Golden Gate. And all things like latest topics like performance matrix server, heartbeat table, bi-directional auto CDR, all the things are covered in the training. Golden Gate Hub, how to set up Golden Gate Hub. Everything is covered. Everything is covered in this training. So this training starts from basics and covers up to advanced level. So the offerings of the live course includes, you have got one year unlimited retakes with the course. So one year unlimited retakes means you can join any session with me for next one year. So I conduct this classic architecture training four to six times a year microservices three to four times a year, very data two to three times a year. So you can join any session with me for next one year. You also have access to recorded session. All the sessions are recorded and you have access to those. You will receive step-by-step -step activity guide with the training. So this training is practical. So you will receive step-by-step -step activity guides. With each session, you will receive the recap notes of the session. Step-by-step -step activity guides for practical purpose. So this training is completely practical as well. So you will have one-on-one -on -one doubt clearing session. You have lifetime on-job support. So lifetime on-job support means any technical questions, issues you have related to Golden Gate in your workplace. You can email me, call me, WhatsApp me for any issue. And you have lifetime on-job support included with the course. You have lifetime WhatsApp support. So WhatsApp support means you'll be part of elite training WhatsApp group where other training students of mine are there. So you can post your questions, queries over there. You can answer other people's questions, queries. So it also becomes collective learning as well. And I'll be sharing with you the lab setup kit for practice. So the virtual boxes, which I was showing you here, these virtual boxes you will also receive. It. So these virtual boxes comes with database software 19C and Golden Gate 21C. Okay, so database 19C is already installed. 
you don't have to install database 19.3. But Golden Gate binaries are present. Installation you will be doing. I'll be showing you how to do it. And then you will be installing it on your own. Okay. So sessions are conducted regularly. All the sessions are practical and training is interview and job oriented. You can join any session for next one year. Sessions are live and interactive and it will pave part towards making you Golden Gate X. At the end of the session, you will be able to set up, manage, troubleshoot, configure Golden Gate on your own, as well as able to provide solution related to Golden Gate on your own to your customer as well. So the upcoming sessions start from, so the new session, classic architecture weekend batch is commencing from 3rd of August next week. So it's a beginner to advanced level training. So same time next week, the session starts. So the session is conducted, the weekend batch is conducted every Saturday, 7.30 to 10 a.m. Eastern time and 5 to 7.30 p.m. Indian time, Indian standard time. So every Saturday, the session is conducted. Sunday is reserved for practice. Okay, so it's a seven-week learning Oracle Golden Gate Challenge, which I'm starting from next week. Then microservices architecture weekday batch is also commencing. So say, for example, if you only want to join microservices, so microservices weekday batch is commencing from second week of August. It will be a weekday batch. So what happens is batches are conducted alternatively on weekends and weekdays. Okay. So this is a weekend batch, which I'm starting. So once weekend classic is starting, once it is completed, then weekend microservices will start and then weekend very different. Same way just now, last week, in fact, this Tuesday only, I completed classic architecture weekday batch. So for them, I'll be starting microservices weekday. So this is how batches are conducted. So if you are new to Golden Gate, learn classic architecture first. So classic architecture weekend batch day one will start from next week, 3rd of August. Okay. And there are a lot of success stories available. You can find it on my LinkedIn. And there are some of them which I have tried to collage here. So you can find them over here, feedback. So there are a lot of success stories also available. So you can find them. So if you're interested to attend the upcoming session, you can fill out the inquiry form or you can email me at ashishagarwalag at gmail.com or you can WhatsApp me as well. So the timing for the weekend batches, 7.30 to Sorry, weekend batch. The timing of the weekend batch is, which starts from next week is, it is every Saturday. Is If you are in US Eastern time, it is 7.30 to 10 a.m. Eastern time. Central time is 6.30 a.m. onwards. If you are in India, it is 5 p.m. onwards. And if you are in UK or Europe, so it will be somewhere around afternoon timing. Okay. So if you have, if you are interested for the upcoming sessions, you can fill out the inquiry form or you can email at ashishagarwalag at gmail.com or you can WhatsApp me anytime at uh, my WhatsApp number, which is plus one four one six eight seven one five seven zero eight. And there are some FAQs available. Like, will I miss anything if I join in middle of the running batch? So anyways, we are starting with the new batch, so you don't have to worry. But still, if you join, say, for example, in middle of the batch, we have covered we have we uh, we have got you covered so you can watch the videos which are available over portal so that you can join on to the color you can come on to the current level and also you have one year unlimited retake so you can join anytime for next one year and while watching videos if you have any query you can you have like one-on-one -on -one doubt clearing sessions and if you're not comfortable, I ensure to provide you highest quality of training. What if I miss a live session? In case if you miss a session, you can go through a recorded version of live session, which will be available within 24 hours when session is completed. I generally make it available within two hours, but I ask for 24 hours maximum. Okay. And you have the opportunity to retake this course for next one year. Okay. And do you provide lifetime on-job support? Yes, I do. If you have queries with any of your real-time projects at your workplace, I will help you with that and that's for lifetime. Even if you want support in 2020, you will get that support as well. And if you have any questions before joining, how can you contact? So I completely understand you have questions. So, and remember one thing, there is no bad question. So if you have any question, feel free to completely reply to the email 
at ashishagarwalaj at gmail dot com or you can WhatsApp me as well. Okay, and you can check the reviews available on my LinkedIn profile on the YouTube channel. You can do that. So I hope today's session was informative and useful. So please provide your feedback for the session via email. Recommend us over LinkedIn as well and Twitter. So my email ID is this. I can quickly send this to you. So. You can email me at ashishagarwalaj at gmail dot com or you can WhatsApp me. Okay. Anytime, if you have any question, anything, feel free to reach out, and I'll guide you. So there was one question. So if you have any post session queries, like after this session, if you have any query, feel free to reach out to me. Drop an email at ashishagarwalaj at gmail dot com or tweet me at ashishagarwalaj or drop a comment on my YouTube channel or you can WhatsApp me or you can send a message over LinkedIn. Now there was a question at the starting that uh, most of most of the other question I have covered uh, during the session itself while letting you know. But one question which I didn't cover was there was a question. Pornedu Das has that question. What is the difference between rack and gold? Guys, rack and golden gate are completely different. Rack is high availability solution. So high availability means there is one database which is there on multiple nodes. So there is no replication. It's just that one node, so multiple, so your database is running on multiple. Nodes. So say for example, if one node goes down, the other nodes are there so that your database is highly available. So you can say that what is the difference between single node database and rack database. So rack means real time application plus. So the, the database is running on cluster and in that cluster, if one node goes down, other nodes are there from there, your replication, can, your, your database can continue to run. So it's not a replication. It is basically a database, single database, which is running on multiple nodes instead of one single node. Okay. Okay. If you have any other question, you can ask. So guys, we are starting from the live training session from next week. And the timing is evening time as per Indian time. And you have, like, if you are in US time, it's in morning. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. So any question if you have, you can anytime reach out to me and I'll help you. Thank you very much for joining.